Hello friends! Many animals have a strange symbiotic relationship. In simple terms, symbiosis is a mutually beneficial relationship involving physical contact between two organisms that do not belong to the same species. This relationship can be maintained in order to ensure cleanliness, protection, transportation, and even facilitate the search for food. However, it's a fine line between the beneficial and harmful outcomes of such symbiosis. Wolves and crows are very different animals, and it would seem that they can't communicate with each other. However, they manage to find a common language. A pack of wolves is often accompanied by several feathered companions. Hovering in the sky, the crows would see a moose or a deer and call the wolves. They fly from prey to predators, reporting to the latter where there's prey nearby. Crows can make a wide variety of sounds. Some people believe that wolves can understand perfectly well what the birds are saying, and so they follow them. Even if the prey tries to hide, the crow will easily track it down and show their friends where to go. After catching the prey, the wolves are first to eat. When the predators are full, it's the crow's turn. They eat calmly, and the wolves don't touch them. Moreover, crows can warn the wolf pack of something dangerous. You can say that wolves have their own natural drones. Of course, wolves can find prey on their own, and most of the time they hunt at night when the crows are sleeping. Crows can also find food on their own. They feed on carrion as well as from dumpsters. However, it's still more convenient for them to search for food together. It's a very well-known fact that many birds make all sorts of efforts to get undesirable neighbors out of their nests. But nevertheless, such unusual birds as the eastern screech owl specifically get some very useful co-inhabitants to live in their nests. It turns out that the eastern screech owls allow snakes to live with them. Why? So that they kill the insects that eat the food brought by the owls. The scientists who made this amazing discovery say that the snakes that live with the owls look more like huge earthworms and are completely blind. Moreover, these snakes come to the bird's nests and perform their duties only at night. Researchers believe that the snakes actually do a lot of good for the owls. Their contribution helps the owls to reproduce successfully. The most common types of prey that the owl brings to their nests are decapitated mice, dead beetles, and the like. All these owls' delicacies tend to attract insects. It is in the name of protecting their food from these insects that the owls deliberately invite snakes into their nests. The snakes eat the larvae of ants and flies that eat the bird's prey. That's a rather good working symbiosis. Can I get a ride, mister? That's probably how sea anemones address certain types of crabs in the ocean. Sea anemones hitchhike on the backs of hermit crabs, which allows them to rise above the seabed. Anemones use their tentacles to grab the leftover food from the hermit crabs when they eat. But what's in the relationship for the crabs? The sea anemone protects the hermit crab from hungry octopuses. With the spiny tentacles of the sea anemone on its back, crabs become less attractive to predators. Moreover, crabs help fend off sea creatures that are inclined to eat the sea anemone. It's interesting that this relationship doesn't develop by chance. Crabs will specifically look for anemones to put them on their backs. In fact, when the hermit crab changes shells, it removes the anemone with its claws and reattaches it to the new shell. When coyotes and badgers work together, they combine their specific hunting skills to increase the likelihood of catching the prey. Yes, you heard that right, coyotes and badgers hunting together. Yes, you heard that right, coyotes and badgers hunt together. How does this work? The larger coyote chases the prey across the prairie or the meadows. Meanwhile, the badger hides in the burrow of the prey, such as a ground squirrel or a stepdog, and grabs them when they return home. Thus, the coyote gets the prey if it tries to run away, and the badger grabs the prey when it tries to hide underground. Although only one of the predators eventually gets the prey, 
Many studies of these relationships show that the combined efforts of these animals increase the chances of getting food for both of them. Badgers and coyotes eat the same food, so they compete with each other. However, the cunning stepdogs are not always easy to catch because they don't stray far from their burrows. Therefore, the Badger-Coyote Alliance helps in hunting them. Some coyotes may congregate into groups, but most of them lead solitary lives, so they rarely hunt in packs. Interestingly, the badger is an even lonelier creature, which makes its partnership with the coyote even weirder. Research has shown that coyotes that partner with badgers catch 30% more prey than single coyotes. Spending most of their time sitting on elephants, rhinos, zebras, and African buffaloes, African starlings eat ticks from the skin of their mammal hosts. This provides starlings with all the nutrients they need. In addition, the hosts are pleased that the birds remove ticks and parasites from their skin. Scientists believe that this relationship began a long time ago, as the starling's beak seems to be designed specifically to penetrate deep into the host's skin in search of food. Starlings also make a specific sound to alert other birds and their owner of danger. However, the relationship between starlings and their hosts isn't always mutually beneficial. By removing ticks from the host's hide, Starlings also suck blood from open wounds on their skin. This is another way to get nutrients for them, which makes the birds look more like parasites. While this dilutes the symbiotic relationships between the two species and carries the risk of infection for the hosts, elephants and zebras may find it a small price to pay for the cleaning services provided by the starlings. However, starlings aren't always helpful. Sometimes they leave the ticks if they aren't filled with blood, the main nutrient for the birds. In these cases, the starlings will allow them to continue feeding on the host's skin until they become more attractive to the birds. Returning to the African savanna, Ugandan scholars have witnessed a strange friendship between warthogs and mongooses. In Uganda's Queen Elizabeth National Park, Warthogs have been noticed to lie down on the ground if they encounter a mongoose. Warthogs get a cleaning service when the sharp-toothed mongooses pick insects and especially ticks from their skin. Thus, the mongoose gets food and the warthog gets clean. In some cases, several mongooses work on the tough skin of one warthog and even climb onto the pig. If you are a fish and haven't made an appointment yet, you're in luck. Just visit the cleaning station at your local reef, where cleaning fish like wrasses and gobies are just waiting to remove unwanted parasites and other things from your mouth and other body parts. Upon arriving at the reef, which is the cleaning station, a fish such as a parrotfish or even a shark will assume a specific pose to tell the cleaner fish to approach. When the cleaners begin to devour their delicious buffet of parasites, mucus, and dead tissue from their customers. If the cleaner fish becomes too aggressive and bites off too much tissue or mucus, the symbiotic relationship may be terminated by the larger client fish. The most famous cleaner fish are wrasses, which live along the coral reefs of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. These fish often have bright blue stripes on their bodies, making them very visible to larger fish that need cleaning. And that's all for today, friends. Share your thoughts about today's episode in the comments. Like the video and don't forget to share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.